The topic that we're talking about today is data. Data that you collect during your experiment end up being like the road signs that you see when you're going along and driving in a car. They help to guide you in the path that you're going to be going. And the data is going to be guiding you when you get to our section where we talk about conclusions. So it's really important that we do a good job to pay attention to those signs, like how we're going to be paying attention to the different things that are happening during our experiment. We want to make sure that we note and write the things down that are happening and that we are very clear and concise with how we re represent that because we're going to need to go back to that and really look at that information because it's going to help us a lot in writing and figuring out what we actually learned from our experiment. Okay, so I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to helping to understand the best ways to represent the data that you collect in your experiment. Now, most of the experiments that we do in class, we're just going to be doing in our lab notebooks. We're going to be writing things down and it's going to be less formal, but there are going to be some times when we are going to be doing a very serious experiment that we spent a lot, a lot of time on. And we're going to want to take that to the next step and represent that formally. So most of the things that I'm going to show you today are going to be the formal outcome. Okay? But you can do these things simply by following the same guidelines in your lab notebook. When we collect data, we want to make sure that we first establish a data table to actually do our hard data writing down. This is where we're literally in the midst of our experiment and we're writing down numbers in a table. We want to make sure that that table is set up appropriately before we get started. So let's take a look at how to set up a data table first. Take a look at this. This experiment was based on two different types of environment and collecting temperatures over time. What we have on the left side of the screen is the thing that we changed in the experiment. On the right side of the data table is what I collect, what I measure. Okay. And what was measured in this experiment is the time, the temperature over time. And so I have marked out the different points of time in which the temperature was collected. I've added one bonus column and that's my interpretation column. You might often want to have an interpretation column to start to get to the heart of some of the things that you're collecting because a lot of people like to go off of averages to help them write their conclusions a little bit later on. And so an average column or a total column is a great thing to add into your data table. What, we, what I want to talk to you about is how you can transition this to the other part of what we need to do to showcase the information that we've collected. We've got a data table set up here, and what we want to do is we want to interpret that data through a chart or a graph. Graphs and data are good things because they help us to really see those trend lines very blaringly from what we might not see when we're just looking at numbers. And they also help us through the process of understanding more about what we did in our experiment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can make a chart or a graph using Google Spreadsheet. The main thing that I want to point out to you here, going back to our table, is this. You can see here that I just have numbers written in the right dependent variable side. Okay. I don't actually have any labels behind the numbers. You can see the label up here where it says in Celsius. That'll show you that all of these numbers were temperatures that were taken in Celsius. It's really important, especially when you're doing it on the computer, to make sure that you do not have anything behind that because if you do, it will exclude that information from your table. So tip number one, make sure that there are no labels behind the numbers when you're working on a data table, putting it into a graph on a computer. What I like to do first to get started to making my chart is I like to highlight the information that I want there to be a chart or graph of. And I'm going to go over here to the right side and it says insert chart and that's exactly the place that I want to be. And so once I click on this, Google is going to show you how much it actually likes to think for you. It recommends some charts on this very first start tab. You can see that there's three tabs here. Start, Charts, and Customize. The two places that I like to be are the Start tab and the Customize tab. It shows here the ranges that I selected for the information that I want to have graphed, and it kind of gives me a setup to show what these might look like a preview of sorts. And it shows you that you can add in other things like a left vertical axis and a horizontal axis title and a chart title. 
Now, one thing that you might want to think about, and an important thing here, is the switch rows slash columns tab. Right now, it has it separated out just like how I do on my data table by types of environment. But I think it would make more sense to actually have the information going over time. And so I'm going to switch that to rows and columns. I'm not in love with a bar chart, and that's really the only options that they're giving me. The other thing that I think is interesting is that it shows the color blue for the warm environment and the color red for the cool environment. Those are not two colors that I would associate with those words, so I'm going to show you how you can actually change that as well. So I'm going to go into charts, and what I would like to do is a line graph. And so I'm going to click on line graph. Very good. I like the way that looks a lot better. It shows me clearly that the blue or the warm environment is much higher and that it has a higher peak than the cool environment. And so I'm going to leave that as is. And then I'm going to go on to my customized tab and I'm going to start to change some things. The first thing that I'm going to change is the title of the overall chart. And I'm going to call it temperature over time of different environments. I can also change the font size of the title and I can change the color as well. Now, when you scroll down here, it gives you basically anything on this chart you can customize to make it look the way that you want. And you can spend a lot of time doing it or a little bit of time doing it. I recommend spending a little to medium, depending on how formal it is the, of what we're working on. You can change where the legend is at to the top, the bottom, the inside, or not having a legend at all. But I kind of like it over there on the right, and so I'm going to leave it right there. I could change the font if I wanted to, and I could also even give it more of a background color if I wanted to to the whole table, but I like it just the way it is. Now, I can come and scroll down here, and it's going to start to talk to me about the axis are at two axis points and it showed us earlier that we could have labels there and I highly and strongly recommend that you do because that's going to help to give clarity to the types of graphs that you are making. It's actually going to be required in our more formal um, data representations that you do have labels. And so for our horizontal axis, this is our time of temperature and I can go and I can change to my left vertical and I can say that my left one is in degrees Celsius. Now, if I did not like how it went all the way up to 20, I could change that here. I could still start at zero, but I could have it only go to 15. And it's going to start to show more of a spike here and that the warm environment is much warmer than the cooler environment. And I'm gonna actually go back and I, I'm not in love with my horizontal label, so I'm gonna say time of temperature collected. Collections, ooh, there we go, I like that word better. Now, as we said earlier, as I said earlier, you can even change the colors if you, if it doesn't make sense to you. Like warm environment being blue does not make sense. And so I am going to change my warm environment to red. I could even change the line thickness if I wanted to. And I could make there be a point to it as well. I like that. I like the way that looks. Now. I can go to my cool environment, I can make that blue, I can make it thicker, and I can add in points as well. Excellent, I like the way that this is turning out. So, I've got my graph here set up. I really like all of the things that are going on here. I like that there is a title at the top. That is a requirement for all graphs or charts. There is a title on the left axis and the bottom axis also both requirements. And I believe that this chart is the best type of chart that re represents this information. All of these things are exactly what you want to do when you are creating and collecting and showcasing the data that you've collected. If you've done this in a good way, you will be well set up for your overall um, experiment and to move you into your conclusions, which is going to be what the next video is about. So if you have any questions, please just let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will check in with you later. Thanks.